<sighs> Hi guys, hope the sound is okay. Um, today I was having a, a bit of a rummage through some old magazines and stuff I had and I remembered that my dad in the 80s or 70s and 80s um, did quite a lot of photography and that's probably where I, I get it from I suppose. Um, and I've got some of these, some original, well, back in the back in the 80s, um, photography magazines. They're really quite interesting. I don't know if you can see, but um, it's just techniques and what, what's available back then and, and things like that. So I thought I'd actually talk about the difference between what it was like back in 70s, 80s, 90s and what we've got now and how photography has actually changed. Um, you know, so it has it has changed <laughs> quite a lot. Obviously, the concept's still the same. We capture light through lenses onto a form, onto a um, a medium of some sort, either film or or glass with silver nitrate or a, a digital sensor. And um, you know, it's it's just come on and on. Sort of mid two thousands, it went from leaps and bounds. You know, um, where we started off with a the first digital cameras which were only uh, I think one or two megapixels um, and now we're using sort of 40, 40 plus and up to 50 megapixels on some of the 35 mils um, so yeah I've got my Sony a7R2 here and obviously a brilliant bit of kit um, still love using it and I've got just an old Minolta uh, 35 mil and uh, I stick a film it every now and again. Um, just the usual SLR. All the Minolta lenses that I've still got fit. Um, even though I'm slowly getting rid of them, I've kept my macro lens, uh, which I use with the LAE A3 adapter um, from Sony, and it works absolutely fine on the, the Sony A7R2. Um, but who remembers the days of putting a film in? Um, you know, it's it, the fact we moan, or a lot of people moan now. One about how many shots you get to an SD card, or you can only do this much video, and that, and this, that, and the other. Um, but the fact is, you have to remember that we were using those CR2 batteries, CR2 batteries, in these cameras. And I can't remember how many films you used to get out of a out of a battery, but if you had a big lens on that was using quite a lot of power, it would go through those things, and they were quite expensive. I remember that. Um, obviously, film, twenty four to thirty six exposures, generally, um, and you only had an ISO range of a hundred up to sixteen hundred. Really, you could get thirty twos, and you could get a sixty four ISO, a sixty four hundred ISO, um, but I never used one. Um, I'd only really ever use 1600 ISO on film and you know, occasionally if you really had to you would stop a film halfway or whatever you needed to and change it uh, for a faster film so you were really we, we were quite limited and we, we shot a lot less you thought about your images a lot more um, and uh, yeah I mean it was expensive the cameras themselves to buy weren't weren't all that expensive I think my most expensive uh, film SLR 35mm was about 900 to 1000 pounds without any lenses. Um, but obviously, now you're looking at three and a half thousand pounds for the, the high end, uh, or even more up to five thousand pounds for the high end um, uh, DSLRs or mirrorless. So, you know, it's a big difference in the initial outlay on a digital compared to a film. The films are quite a bit cheaper, but it's a constant expense of buying film processing film printing it or you know um, and all that so there's pros and cons um, convenience so convenience of the digital is you can see them straight away on the screen where in the old days we used to hope and pray that we got the shot we wanted but then it added the charm you, know, you had the charm of you know what you know what you never knew what you're gonna get because there was no screens and the first time I used this you know um, last year I took it to go out for film. I hadn't used a film camera for maybe five or six years, maybe more. And what a strange feeling! What a strange feeling! You, you just were thinking about thinking about the shots that you had to do, um, or were you going to take a lot more before you took them because you just didn't want to waste a shot. 
So I went out for the day with A36 exposure film in, a black and white one in fact, one of these, and I took the 36 shots, but it took me all day, where you can go out with the digital and you can take hundreds, you know. We also, you know, we moaned about the battery lives on, well that's a Nikon one. <coughs> Uh, and that's one of the Sony mirrorless ones. So we moan about, well, people snag off the Sony's. I mean, I get a thousand shots for two out of two batteries generally um, from the A7R2. So two of these. Um, if you're working quite quickly during the day, or you may get 800 shots if you, if you, uh, you know, a bit more leisurely. Um, like I say, I can't remember how much we got out of two CR, CR2 batteries, but I do remember them being quite expensive. I mean, you can buy one of these batteries, the X-Pro, um, basically equivalent of the Sony ones, and they are £13. And I do have a thing that rings in my brain, these batteries here, which aren't rechargeable, they were around about nine quid for two, um, you know, back in the 90s. So, yeah, I mean, expensive back then. Um, the capacity size obviously between the, the mirrorless cameras because the mirrorless cameras are smaller than a, uh, the uh, DSLRs they're slightly smaller and yes you do get a lot more um, battery light out, life out of the larger batteries um, but I just thought I'd show you the comparison of these three um, what we've what we sort of used to have to deal with or what we did deal with um, so that was that was an interesting thought really um, it's a bit random I know um, but yeah I mean I might take a few photos and upload these um, onto onto this video just because it's quite interesting. Some of the interesting stuff in here, you know, it's just the print quality, how our print quality is improved as well, um, and the paper paper quality as well is very different. Um, our magazine is now very glossy. This is very, it feels rough. Um, you know, they're here. They're talking about um, there are many occasions when. Uh, the image formed by a standard lens is simply not enough. Not enough. A telephoto gives you bigger, better pictures. Um, so they're talking about a 105 and a 200 mm lens here, um, an 80 to 200. Um, but they're all manual focus. All manual focus there. Um, but you just look at the photos and they just don't look anything like they do now. Um, but I, I'm guessing that's where the colour. And the printing side of things has, has, has also um, improved massively as well. Um, I mean, there's a shot in here of a building on a sunset, and it's not even in, well. It looks slightly blurred to me. Um, and this is in a photography magazine, <laughs> so you know, if that was in there today, you'd be taking the take the mick out of it. Um, you know, so it is. You know, just something interesting. I don't even know when these were printed. Uh, 1981. So these were this 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 uh, series was uh, by the photo, your creative guide to taking better pictures, the Marshall Cavendish publication in weekly parts. So it was sold in Singapore, Malta, Africa, or South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, and the UK. It was 65 pence. <laughs> You know, would you pay five quid now for a photography magazine? Um, or in Hong Kong, it was eight uh, Hong Kong do eight, eight dollars in Hong Kong, and three dollars fifty in Singapore. Um, but I've got issue number one. Unfortunately, Dad must have lost or thrown away the rest because I've got uh, number eight, number ten, uh, number eleven, and number one. I'm sure we had. A, I'm sure there was a few more, but I haven't stumbled across them yet. But uh, you know, it's just interesting to see the differences of what we now deal with, and the fact that we're so quick to moan about everything. Um, you know, I've, I've written a few things down. I just uh, there's a there's a website that's got a really interesting article about film and digital, and I'll what I do is I'll put the link in at the end, the bottom of the uh, um, of the description of this video. So have a have a look and have a read. It's quite quite interesting. But um, basically, what it's saying was um, about our ISO differences. Obviously the film was uh, ISO 100 to 1600 to 3200 and even 6400. Um, 
our modern lenses today they've got extra anti anti uh, glare coating so the sensors obviously don't get abused um, you don't get the dodgy light bouncing around um, you know they didn't have in body stabilization they've got five I mean five axis image stabilization in stabilization in um, in the bodies now um, also the lenses you know the, the lenses just weren't you know the difference in quality and the the, um, the way things are now we've got it extremely easy compared to what we had before um, it does say about resolution on there that film some of the film uh, 35 mil films were approximately 7 megapixels or up to 16 megapixels equivalent so you know the fact that we're now at 24 or 48 or 50 or 42 or whatever megapixels we've surpassed the resolution of film um, until you get into the medium format where apparently a medium format um, uh, camera was up to about uh, 200 megabytes uh, sorry 200 megapixel uh, equivalents so that was that's quite interesting um, I mean how much more usable is the DSLR or mirrorless compared to a modern day or an old uh, sorry a mod, I say a modern day uh, a 90s 2000s film film DSLR you know um, yes this had you know all the auto functions and everything built in it's got wireless flash um, red eye um, obviously got uh, remote control you've also got um, uh, what else you got here um, yeah I've got full manual shutter speed aperture priority um, but my first camera it was just manual there was no it wasn't even a light meter in it so you had to you know take a separate light meter and actually get the light reading you wanted then take pictures so it went from being very basic into something that had a little computer in it obviously had a light meter and could tell you what your exposure needed to be um, everything like that so you know your you know autofocus manual focus and it would do I think about this will do about three frames a second this one where obviously even even the um, the a7r2 will do five but I'm shooting on the rx10 mark 4 which is obviously isn't a DSLR or a mirrorless well it is a mirrorless but it's not a interchangeable lens camera that does 24 frames a second the same as the Sony a a9 which is you can take the lens off and everything um, that does 20 frames a second and some of the DSLRs out there do 14 thereabouts I think um, so the way we've come forward the only way of getting faster faster um, burst modes on burst rates rather um, on film was these big um, extra grips of batteries in the like motor drive that actually give you a faster um, a faster uh, burst rate which was you know and then you're running through I mean 36 so if you could do you know six six frames a second back then you got six seconds worth of shots that's it you're done <laughs> that's it quick change film and you've missed so you've got six seconds worth of burst and that's it so for sport and stuff like that what you know how did that work um, you know so the only reason I ever shoot film now is just to have a bit of difference really and a bit more make me think about my shots every now and again a little bit more so I'll go out stick a black and white film in generally just because it's just nice I think um, and just think about what I'm taking shots it's not to do with the quality it's just an interesting thing but you suddenly realize it's 20 quid <laughs> by the time you've bought the film hopefully your batteries are still charged from last time had it processed and had it printed or put onto a CD for you it's around about 20 quid by the time so 36 shots 20 quid you know you just think bloody hell <laughs> um, so yeah it's expensive um, the innovations that have come along obviously the five axis stabilization in the body the gyros in the lenses which obviously stabilize the image I know we did have some back in obviously still film days they still were there um, but the way it's you know it's, it's better the, the, the faster focusing the stabilization is better I mean up to five stops now you know so that's that works rather well um, and uh, other innovations like flash guns so these flash guns have been around for years and you had it on the camera and yeah you could bounce it like that you could bounce off the ceiling you could rotate it and then bounce it sideways and then when you put it into portrait mode you could still bounce it so if you're in portrait mode um, the only downside is now you've got 
from that way, which is a nice spread of light, which gives you an even lighting, you've now turned it that way. And you end up with a bar of light going that way, which is it's just wrong. So you end up with a narrower band of light, which is not what you want, which is not ideal. So I'd say these have been around for years, different different types and different makes, and obviously. Um, but it's taken the new boys on the block, Sony, to come up with it, and you think, what a simple idea. So put it on the A7R2. So it bounces, and you can still send it that way, but it's now got a pivot. So you can actually, and there's no pushing buttons, it's just click, 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 click. It's fast, it's accurate, and the other benefit is you put it into portrait mode, and now you've still got the perfect orientation. So <laughs> they've been around for, I don't know, 20 odd years, I suppose, without being too accurate. And Sony come up with it, you know, whoever that was, well done. Simple, absolutely brilliant. And brilliant thing is you can do, have it that way and you can shoot to the floor if you want, you know, as well. So you've got all that rotation, you know, that's it. So that, that's a, a really, really good innovation of an older design and they've just thought about it and actually brought something out new. And that's one reason I do, you know, agree with what Sony have produced and you know they're innovating um, as good as Canon and Nikon are Sony seems to be the ones that are actually bringing out the stuff that is new is different you know um, you know they're all great it doesn't matter what you're using they still do amazing photos I mean if you look back what we were what we've lived with for, for a long time you know and how much harder photography was to try and get into and it's the expense of you know doing it um, these digital, I mean, you can buy a, a good DSLR second hand one for a couple of hundred quid. You know, you can get full frame now for a few hundred quid. You know, so if you spent a thousand pounds on a, you know, even a second hand one or even a new cheaper entry level one, you've got, you know, you've got an amazing camera. Yes, the more money you spend, the better the quality is going to be, and, and it is, it shows. Um, and also the lenses, the lens quality, but it's just crazy, you know, what you can. You know, you look at the cheaper, older, older cameras, which were very basic. Um, they had very, you know, limited. Some of the SLRs, the film SLRs, you could put the, you could change the lens and everything, but they just have a full auto mode. So it was basically a dummy, a dummy mode um, for someone who wanted to take good pictures, but they didn't understand the manual settings of a camera. So you just have full auto. And that was it. Um, obviously, this one's got manual, you know, and all the other settings plus an auto mode as do all the other cameras now they still have an auto mode but it just showed you if people still wanted to buy buy a camera they would have a point and shoot or an slr which had just auto mode that was it um you know so i just thought i'd do a quick quick talk about that really because i thought it was quite interesting so i'll put a link down on the the bottom here just below the, below the thing with the um the link to that website which is actually really interesting read it talks about the history and also the the way digitals are compared to film and vice versa so it's quite interesting but i'm gonna have a good read of these i might pick some articles out and put some put some in but it's just interesting things the fact these are in i well, say pretty much mint, mint condition as well from the 80s um it's you know it's interesting so um i'm gonna think i'm gonna put them in a plastic sleeve and keep them keep them uh, safe because uh, they're in such nice condition and uh yeah so um that's it for now so please subscribe please push the little notification bell please comment and please share with your friends and family and other mates who do photography and, and things like that so um okay chat soon cheers guys